today is going to be fun okay welcome to the channel if you are new and we will talk about the house of Saul and I will show you that the house of Saul is in fact Christianity house of Saul its first reference in the Old Testament referring to the first king of Israel and his name is King Saul from the tribe of Benjamin. I'm going to show you that that is the house of Saul in the New Testament whose founder is Saul whose name was changed to Paul and that is Christianity. Now you have to learn types and shadows. I'm going to be patient with you today and look on the screen. Look at all these teachings on types and shadows. I'm scrolling. I'm still scrolling. I'm still scrolling. I'm still scrolling. I am going to go into more results. You're going to see right there. Look. That types and shadows is nothing new. The problem is most people, 99% of people teaching types and shadows are wrong. And they fail to fully interpret the type and shadow of Joseph. And that is Prophet Isa. You may call him Jesus. Everything you see in the lifestyle of King Saul is what you'll see in the lifestyle of the New Testament Saul. And it's the same thing with Joseph. Everything you see in the lifestyle of Joseph is the same thing you'll see in the lifestyle of Prophet Isa. Prophet Isa was not killed it was a big lie just like joseph he was not killed his father thought he was torn to pieces but it was not true it was a big lie now let's get some scripture second samuel three and one now there was long war between the house of saul and the house of David. But David waxed stronger and stronger. And the house of Saul waxed weaker and weaker. Pause. These are two religions. Jesus is the Messiah in Islam. And according to the Hadith, he will return as a just ruler. He will destroy the cross from the house of Saul. So it's safe to say that the house of David is Islam. And the house of Saul is Christianity and its leader is Paul or Saul. So right now we see that Christianity is the largest religion. But what's happening right now? Islam is beginning to take over. Right now, you would be surprised to know that Islam is the fastest growing religion. And by the year 2050, Islam will be the largest religion on planet Earth. I truly believe that Islam is the answer to Jesus' prayer when he said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Jesus was praying for the kingdom to be set up on earth. And that kingdom that he was praying for was the religion of Islam. Going on to 2 Samuel 3 and 6. And it came to pass while there was war between the house of Saul and the house of David that Abner made himself strong for the house of Saul. Now, Abner was the man who had his king's concubine. Abner had his king's wife. Now, this man 
was his uncle. And he had his wife. Although he elected Ishbosheth to be king, everybody was looking at Abner as king. Why? Because he had his king's wife. And it's the same thing with Jesus and Paul. Although Jesus is supposed to be the Messiah of the New Testament or the teacher or the rabbi of the New Testament, guess who is really the teacher of the New Testament? It's Saul. It's the apostate Paul. And just like Abner had his king's wife, Paul has his father's church. Jesus never took ownership of God's house. He always said, this is my father's house. Paul did that. That's why we call Christianity the house of Saul. Paul is making it seem like Jesus is the Messiah of this church. But really he is. He really is the false Messiah of the Christian church. And just like Abner, he was making it seem like Ishbosheth was the king. But really, everybody was looking at Abner like he was the king. Abner was the one who elected Ishbosheth. He had the power. He was over the army of the house of Saul. And it's the same exact thing in Christianity. Paul is really the man. He's really the God of the New Testament church, okay? And a lot of you have failed to realize just how important the apostate Paul is. Everything from Genesis to Revelation is pointing to Paul. Paul is the Pharaoh of the church. Paul is the God of the New Testament church. Paul is the king of the New Testament church. Paul is the Messiah of the New Testament church. He is using Jesus like a shield. He's using Jesus like an armor bearer. But really he is the one guilty of stealing his father church. And that father is the almighty God. So types and shadows are very important. I've explained to you, and you can watch the video, Types and Shadows, how one Bible character can play more than one role, okay? Moses can play a type and shadow of the prophet Muhammad. Moses can play a type and shadow of Paul. But this is one man. This is how studying the Bible works. One man can play one to two to three to four or more different roles. And King Song, he is the apostate Paul in the New Testament. The church don't belong to Jesus. The church does not belong to Jesus. The church belongs to Paul. And Jesus is the Messiah of the Muslims, okay? He's not the Messiah of the Christian church. And that's where you are wrong, okay? According to the Quran, the Christians will not believe in Jesus until after his death. So what that means is the Christians, even though they have the New Testament, they have yet to believe in Jesus. Jesus because you can't get Jesus in that book okay Jesus is in the next book he's in the Quran okay and he's in the beginning of the Quran he's in the ending of the Quran now in the Bible Jesus doesn't come along until the New Testament he's not spoken of in Genesis, he's not spoken by name in the entire Old Testament. And according to the Quran, which is so true, the Christians will not believe in Jesus until after his death. Because in Islam, we believe Jesus 
has not died yet. And that's proof that you can't get Jesus in the New Testament. That's another man's revelation. That's Paul's revelation. That's Paul's church. Now let's keep going on. 2 Samuel 3 and 10. To translate the kingdom from the house of Saul and set up the throne of David over Israel and over Judah from Dan even to Beersheba. Now the religion of Christianity right now is on top. But there's coming a day when the kingdom will be translated from the Christians to the Muslims. And the saints of the Most High will take the kingdom and that is the Muslims. Going on to 2 Samuel 9, 1 through 2. And David said, is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? Okay. And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. Let's go to verse 3. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan have yet a son which is laying on his feet. Now this is a picture of Mephibosheth. And we have many Mephibosheths out here today who were once under the religion of Saul in the house of Saul, which is Christianity. Because of the news of the gospel. Now think about it. Christianity's news has caused us all to be lame on our feet, just like Mephibosheth. He was dropped as a baby. He was lame because of the news of Jonathan and Saul. See, bad news, false teaching will affect the way you walk, okay? And the nation of Islam has healed us and teach us how to walk upright. So this religion of Islam is the healing for the Christian church. And there are many Mephibosheths out there. You have been lame because of the false teaching coming from the house of Saul. This is your day to turn and repent and be healed and come up under a real religion. And that is the religion of Islam. Let's get that scripture as well. This is going to be 2 Samuel 4 and 4. And Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son that was lame of his feet. He was five years old when the tidings or the news came of Saul and Jonathan out of Jezreel. And his nurse took him up and fled. And it came to pass as she made haste to flee, she was in a rush, that he fell and became lame, and his name was Mephibosheth. Now, I also think of the prophet Esau. Because of the New Testament lies, the prophet Esau's message has been falsified. And so God Almighty is saving Jesus from the house of David to be the Messiah over Islam. And all those that are remaining of Christianity, Christians will have a chance to receive Jesus as their Messiah after they witness the killing of the firstborn. And that is the death of Jesus, which is in total agreement to the Quran when it says that the Christians will not believe in Jesus until after his death. All right. Now let's go to 2 Samuel 21 and 1. 
Then there was a famine in the days of David, three years, year after year. And David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered, It is for Saul and for his bloody house, because he slew the Gibeonites. Now the Gibeonites goes back to the Amorites. And Gibeon actually means Palestine. So because Saul was killing the people of Palestine, there was a curse placed upon him that seven of his sons had to die. Now, that is a picture of the Hadith when it says that God will deliver to every Muslim a Jew and a Christian and will say, this is your ransom from the fire. Paul could not sacrifice Jesus, okay? Even though he has letters of Jesus being crucified, that's not true. The only thing Paul could sacrifice was his own church. This is a story in the Bible, and that is Jephthah's daughter. Jephthah had no sons to sacrifice. So what did Jephthah do? He sacrificed his own daughter. That was a picture of Paul setting his church on fire, okay? And his daughter or his church did not know a man. In other words, she did not know Jesus as her Messiah, okay? The Christians have become a ransom for the Muslims, okay? The Jews have become a ransom for the Muslims, okay? Give God all the praise for that, okay? Don't argue with the Christian. Don't argue with the Jews. Simply tell them thank you because you know what? You are my ransom from the fire. And so the bloody house of Saul is going into the murder of Jesus on biblical record. That's going into the Christians taking communion, eating the body of Jesus like a cannibal, drinking his blood in a figure like a vampire. This bloody house of Saul is the Christian church okay now let's keep going let's keep going let's go to the book of acts chapter 8 verse 3 as for Saul he made havoc of the church entering into every house and hailing men and women committing them to prison that's exactly what Paul is doing right now Paul is putting the church in prison now, there's a Hadith, and I want to read it. I love this Hadith, and it's in the Bukhari, all right? And it reads in Book 37, Hadith 2680, The proud will be gathered on the day of judgment, resembling tiny particles in the image of men. They will be covered with humiliation everywhere. They will be dragged into a prison in hell called Bulas in the Arabic tongue, which means Paul, submerged in the fire of fires, drinking the drippings of the people of the fire, filled with derangement. So there is a prison named Bulas, which means Paul. And this is the founder of the Christian church. And see, we have record of him in the book of Acts committing women and children, men, okay, to prison. That's what Paul is doing right now through his teachings. He is putting the church in jail. And I have been exposing this truth for quite some time right here on my YouTube channel. Going on in the book of Acts. Let's go to Acts chapter 9. And let's go to verse 11. And the Lord said unto him. Arise and go into the street which is called straight. And inquire in the house of Judas. See that's going into the tribe of Benjamin. Because the tribe of Benjamin was called the house of Judah. The house of Judah consists of Benjamin, Levi, and Judah. 
All the other tribes were called the tribe of Ephraim, which is the northern kingdom. So the prophet was told to go to the house of Judas, because <laughs> that's exactly who Paul is. He's a picture of Judas as well. <laughs> For one called Saul. See, the house of Saul in the Old Testament is the house of Paul. And his name is Saul. Okay, this means Christianity. I keep showing you over and over and over. And you still do not get it. All right. Some of y'all, I know for a fact, at least one of y'all is getting it. Now, let's do a recap on everything we went through. The house of Saul is Christianity. Saul in the Old Testament is a type and shadow of Saul in the New Testament. Also, David and Bathsheba is twofold. It's a picture of Paul attempting to steal the church and it's also a picture of Jesus being the Messiah of Islam which is called the Lamb in the Bible. Remember, Bathsheba was called the Lamb. When Nathan came to David and told him about his sin, he called Bathsheba a lamb. Islam, get it, is the lamb. See, Islam is the lamb. And Esau in the Bible is a picture of the prophet Esau. Now, Esau had a Ishmaelite woman to wife. What is that saying? Jesus is the Messiah in Islam. Okay. Joshua, he saved Rahab and her entire house. Now, that is a picture of Jesus being the Messiah of the Arabs. Okay. Also, Joseph. Joseph marrying an Egyptian wife is a picture of Jesus being the Messiah in Islam. All throughout the Bible, we have stories on top of stories on top of stories that proves that the only religion Jesus was interested in is the religion of Islam. Wake up. Wake up. Now, the house of David is Islam. Think about David. Think about the prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. They both were shepherds. They both were the first people to be named the names they had. David was the first person to be named David. The prophet Muhammad was the first person to be named Muhammad. David is famous for the women singing. Saul has slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands, okay? Now the prophet Muhammad, he showed up in Mecca, 629 CE, with exactly 10,000 Muslims, okay? The prophet Muhammad in the Quran was told to remember out of all people, David. Why? Because David was a type and shadow of the prophet Muhammad. David was given a book. The prophet Muhammad was given a book. David was in Paran after the death of Samuel. And the prophet Muhammad came out of Paran. Okay. Now, I can keep going and I can keep going. But I want you to see this. Okay. That... Paul, he thought he was the Shiloh. He thought he was the last and final messenger. Oh, I got scripture. I'm going to show you a scripture in the Bible that proves that Saul thought he was the last and final messenger. This is going to be 1 Corinthians 15 and 8. And last of all, he was seen of me. Also, as one born out of due time. Paul thought he was the last and final messenger. That's why he was in Arabia. And then Damascus three years before meeting up with the apostles in Jerusalem. 
Okay. He gave us 13 letters. He called his church saints. Now, Jesus didn't do that. That was all Paul's doings. Why? Because in Deuteronomy 33 and 2, the last and final messenger would show up with 10,000 saints. Okay. Paul thought he was that guy, but he isn't. Okay. Paul isn't that guy. The last and final messenger is the prophet Muhammad. Now, ask your pastor these questions. Why is Paul in Arabia? Why is Paul talking about two covenants, one with Isaac and one with Ishmael? Okay. Ask your camp leader these questions. I bet you they can't answer you. Going on, the house of David is the house of Islam. Right now, the Christians have the kingdom. The strongest military in the world right now is Christian. Right now, the Christians have the kingdom. But one day, the kingdom will be taken from the Christians because God will not suffer a witch to live and Christianity is witchcraft. God is not going to allow this idolatrous religion to keep going. He's going to shut it down. And what's going to happen is the ground is going to swallow up the sons of Korah and Islam is going to eventually take over and is going to be the world's number one religion. That is going to happen one day and one day soon. Okay, so right here I just showed you the house of Saul is Christianity. The house of David is Islam. In the nation of Islam, we have Jesus to be the Messiah. And I'm going to get that scripture for you. I'm going to show you that Jesus is the Messiah in Islam. Quran 345, when the angel said, Oh Mary, indeed Allah gives you good tidings of a word from him whose name will be the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, distinguished in this world and the hereafter and among those brought near to Allah. So we know that in the Quran, Jesus is the Messiah right there in the beginning of the book. Okay, not in the ending of the book, right there, front and center. Jesus is the Messiah in his life. There's no question. And if Jesus is from the house of David, it's safe for me to say that the house of David represents Islam. And the house of Saul, seeing that Saul is the founder of the Christian church, not only is he the founder of the Christian church, he is the father of the Christian church. And I'm going to get that for you. This is going to be 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15. For though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, see 10,000, he wanted to be the man of the 10,000 saints, but that's not him. That was the prophet Muhammad getting back. For though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have become your father through the Gospels. So if the Bible is saying that Paul is the father of the Christian church, it's safe to say that the house of Saul is the house of Paul. Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! The house of Saul is the Christian church. Jesus never, ever, ever once called anybody Christian. Okay? All that stuff came about in the book of Acts. And Paul is responsible for the Christian church. He created the Christian church. He created that religion just like Moses created the religion of the Israelites. Just like the prophet Muhammad created the religion of the Muslims, Paul created the religion of Christianity. 
Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth.